Okay, so we're gonna go over uh, first our script. That's just the pure code that we had to figure out algorithms for embedding each image. Um, and then we're gonna go through our actual embed GUIs and our uh, recovery GUIs. So first we're gonna go through the script, which was my Shu Hao K's contribution to this project. Um, so it's pretty straightforward. Uh, on the actual assignment, we were we were suggested to use evens and odds as a way of embedding um, as a way of embedding uh, the pictures as a binary flattened image into the hidden dog picture into the dog picture as a hidden image. Um, so the first method that we used was that very evens and odds method. Um, if the image had a certain even and odd combination. We basically manipulated that so it would have it in the order that we wanted. And if we just threw a logical in front of it, it would have uh, remainders where we wanted and re not remainders where we didn't want. So aka we manipulated the divisibility. Um, and this is just image. This is just manipulating the red layer of color for the RGB dog image. So uh, by applying the same evens and odd method to the green color layer and the blue color layer, we were able to embed three images with the same exact method just across the different layers of the dog image. Um, so this covers three image uh, embedding techniques out of 10 that we needed. So the next uh, seven are very similar. Um, the next method is uh, embedding using divisibility by three, and we similarly manipulated it so that uh, certain numbers were divisible by three, others were not. Um, the only difference is uh, this divisibility by three could not influence the previous divisibility by two. So uh, the only way to change divisibility by three without changing divisibility by two is by adding or subtracting two because numbers are already divisible by two no matter how many how many number of tubes twos you add to it won't uh, get more or less divisible um, and this same method was applied across again the uh, red green and blue color layers of the dog image um, next we did the same method for uh, divisibility by five and we did that across the rgb again so we had divisibility by two, three, and five across uh, three color layers, making nine uh, embedding techniques. And for the last one, uh, we applied the same method and used divisibility by seven. So these four loops, as you can see, got a little more convoluted every time because uh, you had to account for previous divisibility that could not be influenced by uh, the current embedding method. So first we influence divisibility by two, and then three by adding or subtracting two, then five by adding or subtracting six to influence neither the divisibility by three nor two. Uh, and then to influence divisibility by seven, we had to add, subtract uh, 30, 60, or 90 to not influence divisibility by two, three, or five. Um, and by subtracting or adding 30 to an 8-bit pixel, uh, I guess the problem arises that you're changing the color of each layer too much, up to 90 uh, color units uh, out of 256. Um, and our solution for this was changing the uh, scope, I guess, of the um, every single uh, pixel for the dog image. So uh, rather than the default uh, unsigned 8-bit uh, integer that was uh, storing uh, the dog picture, we used unsigned 16-bit integers. Um, so this increased the uh, scope of numbers that we could have by 256 fold. Um, and in so doing, made the 90 uh, out of 65,000 uh, color degrees uh, really insignificant. So it was basically embedding images without influencing the appearance of uh, the original image. So that's the basic backbone logic of our project. And next, uh, we'll take you through how to actually use it. All right. <clears throat> so if you run the, I'm Ian Fraser. I worked on the embedding portion of the, G, of the GUI um, and made it look as it does right now. So mostly, I just want to design it in a way that is kind of clean and easy to see. You'll notice here that all the images load right when you open it up. 
that way you can use it. Oh, my bad. Mm -hmm. uh, that way you can look at what image you're, you're about to load. So you can load the dog image, and then load any of these images. They're loading right away. And then you hit an embed message such as one. It'll animate to show that you are in fact embedding it, and it'll work like that. Now, the issue that we talked about is that using other embedding methods could um, disable or make other ones not work. So we want to include a feature that would disable a button. So let's take uh, another random image and try embed method four, which will uh, make one not work. So you have that happen. There you go. It'll go up and then button one disappears. Same thing if you do, say, embed method six, load image, embed method six, goes up. Um, yep. There you go, disappears. So using that, there you go, hold on, you good? Uh, no, you're fine. All right. Yep. Yeah, so using that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Sure. So anyway, um, so using those methods, you can embed them, um, and yeah, it'll work pretty well. Um, yeah. And we had a lot of fun doing that. I had a lot of fun. <laughs> so you can just finish hiding the image. Uh, you can hide as many as you want, or you can go into here, and I'll pull up the final GUI. So I'm Claire Sass. I worked on the recovery GUI, which will be called up after hitting the finish hiding images button on the previous GUI. And so you just click right here, the load embedded image button. <laughs> And it pulls up our original uh, dog image, but the hidden images are within here. And so then using these buttons over here, we can recover the images by checking the divisibility in the RGB image to re-pull up those uh, flattened hidden images. And so here we have our first image one that was hidden. A hidden image using method four and a hidden image using method six. <laughs> And then down at the bottom here, we have instructions to remind the user that they have to use the correct method following the um, embedding methods that they used on the previous GUI. Um, that's about it. Uh, so a quick summary. Uh, we went through and our embedding methods were the visibility by uh, two, three, five, and seven. Uh, two, three, and five were spread across the RGB uh, color layers of red, green, and blue, and uh, the divisibility by seven was uh, unique to only method 10 for the sake of embedding the 10th image at once. Um, our GUIs are very simplistic. Um, you load the original image that you want to embed uh, the hidden images within. Uh, you hit load image for the image that you currently want to embed into it. When you hit load image, it'll appear here on the uh, secret image window, and then you click an embedding method to load that current image into the dog image. When you recover that image, uh, you use only the corresponding method that you embedded the said image with, and then in so doing, you recover the image that you embedded using that method. This is Team Batlam. I'm David, I'm Chu Hauke. Claire Sass. And, <laughs> and this is, uh, I'm keeping this part though, I'm done.